What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another video. Before we get too deep into this one, do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up, because I'm not too proud. Whoa, look at that. I can't even talk. I'm not too proud to ask. Even going into 2020 and closing out 2019. All right. So with that being said, guys... Um, I want y'all to see something here. Give me one moment here. Okay. So, y'all saw the thumbnail. I got hopes, dreams, and aspirations. I have a dream for 2020 gaming. All right? Now, I get it. A lot of you guys think because you hear me out here talking a lot about Stadia, that Stadia is my sole platform. And it's even my preferred platform. And even though I like the platform a lot because it surprised me in regards to its performance you know what i'm saying and some other things that it has to offer it's still not yet and i don't know if it ever will be my preferred way to play but that's okay it doesn't have to be as long as i enjoy it a lot and, it's, and i'm willing to have it within my portfolio of my regular gaming that's good enough they'll still get support from me um it's just that i don't like hearing things that are false and then just letting it slide. It's just a pet peeve of mine. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sorry. I love y'all. But I, I, we got to close out 2019 and be honest. Y'all love living on lies, man. Y'all love it, love it, love it. Y'all love bloviating. Y'all love living on lies. Y'all love telling falsehoods and spreading amongst yourselves. That's why I call y'all. Not all of y'all that are listening. But I call a lot. I'll, I'll, I'll be nicer going into 2020. I call a lot of them the idiot herd. They just love her together and telling a bunch of stupid stuff. That being said, let me tell y'all the truth. I'm going to go over all of the platforms that I game on. You know what I'm saying? I'll let y'all know which is my preferred platform. And I'm going to let you know what I hope all of them can provide going into 2020. So let's start that right now. First and foremost, let's just get right into it. What is my preferred way to play? It's PC. And this is my PC that I have at home. No, it ain't. <laughs> I wish, but no. Our uh, PC is actually my preferred way to play. You know what I'm saying? And how that came about was going into this generation, I actually was going to join the quote unquote PC master race. But when I built my first gaming rig and I started getting into PC gaming, I, there was a lot of exploits and cheats and things going on that I wasn't used to being a console gamer. Um, and I said, you know what, this ain't for me. So I backed away from it and I just, I decided to go with Xbox because as far as consoles were concerned, I preferred them. So I started with Xbox, um, and I preferred them because of the gaming footprint that they had, the types of games that they like to create and they like to inspire more notably, but I didn't see that this gen. So I gravitated back to PC gaming and PC gaming blossomed a lot from the beginning of this gen to where it's at right now at the time of this recording so i figured hey if xbox is going to be all about the gigawatts and the bibblewatts then i'm going to go with the bibblewatts and the gigahertz are the best <laughs> and that's pc gaming that being said even though this is my number one way to play i will tell you this they're not perfect and they have something they need to address big time going into 2020 and that's working with some of these other streaming partners to make sure that streaming on PC is a lot better. Now, when I say that, I know it sounds like that I'm, I'm ignorant and I'm saying that there is a master PC entity and they can control all this. No, I get it. There, there is no de facto PC boss. It's a lot of different groups that make the PC experience. But because of that, I'm hoping that in 2020, They'll either formulate a group or if this group already exists, they'll do better at, at making stuff work. But th there needs to be a group or better working within this group of PC entities like NVIDIA, AMD, Streamlabs, all these people that benefit off of PC gaming to work together to make their entities better. Like, I want to see N NVIDIA uh, work better with Streamlabs OBS. And OBS work better or XSplit work better with, with uh, AMD. I don't want one entity to say, well, we're too high and mighty. We don't care about that because streaming is going to be a big deal. It's already a big deal. It's going to be even bigger. And I'm looking at it this way. If I'm a professional streamer and if these next gen consoles can do 4K 60 
at 60 plus frames per second, it's not going to matter if I get better fidelity for my PC. I live and die off of how my presentation is to the watcher. So if I can get smoother 4K60 in streaming from the consoles than I can from the from the PC, then you then you got a problem there. You know what I'm saying? And you've seen a lot of that this gen where you gotta wait 30, 35 days, 45 days for new drivers and new methods to come out to make said game work on Streamlabs OBS or OBS, you know, or XSplit and all other stuff. And that's ridiculous. Okay. So I NVIDIA, AMD, XSplit, OBS, y'all need to get everybody needs to get together and make sure that all of your services and components and everything complement each other is what I'm trying to say in so many words. Because if not, you're gonna lose a lot of important ground to console. Again, people are just thinking about pure fidelity. No, pure fidelity is not it. Again, streaming has become the livelihood and the profession of a lot of people. And if I get less fidelity on my end, but I, get, but I can omit better, you know what I'm saying? To the watcher and the viewer, and that's putting food on my table. There you go. So I like to see that from PC game. All right. Next on the list is the PlayStation 5. Now, you guys have heard me say I'm not the biggest fan of what they have to offer. And if, you know, and y'all know the deal. If, if I get a multi plat game in all likelihood, um, the PlayStation is not going to be the place where I get it. Right. With that being said, they got the AAA blockbuster exclusives and Sony as of late has overstated their commitment to hardcore gamers. Even when my preferred console said, but wouldn't say so, you know what I'm saying? So with that being said, I'm hoping that what Sony will do, even though they already are the Kings of console, it's not like they need MM2K aboard to see future success. They don't need it. I get it. You know what I'm saying? That Though, if they can't lock someone like me in and while maintaining the people that have come over this generation, man, oh man, it's, it's a wrap. Now, how can they do that? Um, if they show a commitment beyond the over-the-shoulder narrative, I get it. A lot of people like it. It's, it, 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 was, it, it struck gold for, for Sony this generation. That being said, you know, um, showing more commitment to shooters and other uh, style of games with a bigger focus on gameplay. You know, like we saw with God of War. We can see more of that across the board it, outside of the usual aesthetic, then that'll be great. You know what I'm saying? And that'll help lock it down. But what will lock it down even further? See, my Xbox brother, they gonna get mad at me for saying this, but you know what? Hey, look, like I always say, it's always better to let them know the truth, okay? To be transparent, put everything out on the table. My Xbox brethren will tell you behind the scenes. Look, man, PlayStation really killed it. I would've went with them, but it's the controls. I can't get down with them controls. And I understand where they're coming from. So if I'm Sony, I'm hearing that cry, and I'm saying, look, we're making a DualShock 5 and a DualShock 5 2. And the DualShock 5 2 is going to have a thumbstick layout of the, play, uh, of the Xbox. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to allow you to program your response time like how you came with the Xbox Elite controller. Now there's no excuse. Come on over. By doing that, Sony breaks down the fourth wall. And trust me, you will see a lot of people, a lot of people convert over to PlayStation if they do do that. With that being said, they got, it sounds like they're gonna have the sweet spot with um, the console in between the Series X and the Series S for Xbox, you know what I mean? They might hit that sweet spot as far as performance and price. You know, it, it, it'll still be yet to, it's still yet to be seen. But if that is the case, and they solidify those two things, expanding their horizons on the type of games that they have created, and their control support, that's it. <laughs> it's a wrap. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I'm looking for from PlayStation. Next is Xbox. All right. I get it. Phil Spencer came on stage at the Game Awards, shocked the world. People are still talking about that Series X, good or bad. You know what I'm saying? And like they say, pre hey, pr good, good press, bad press is all the same as press. You know what I'm saying? People are talking about Xbox 
more than they ever have in a long time, right? That being said, a lot of people are saying, hey, this seems like a regurgitation, for lack of a better term, of what we saw with the Xbox One X. A boast of power without what? The games. So here's what I'm expecting from Xbox. You need to show games that will make sure that the Series X looks phenomenal and unmatched in fidelity. You need to show games that you, we can't have. A, what we can't have is a repeat scenario where the possibly less powerful PlayStation 5 has games that look better than the X. If you do that, it's a done deal. It's a wrap. It's nail in the coffin. Right? Also, with the Series S, that may be less powerful if it does exist, less powerful than the PlayStation 5. Show games that still look fun on there. That still look fun and still look badass on a Series S. You got to show the best lights of both of those. So people can get a Series X and say, I'm not getting no games that look better elsewhere on any other system than the Series X. And when they get the Series S, they can say, oh, at a lower entry point, I can still get badass, kick-ass games, you know, that are exclusive to the Xbox ecosystem. Okay? So that's what Xbox need to do on top of just talking Bibble Watts and compute units. Last but not least, Stadia. All right. <coughs> so, and big ups to my homie, Dark Griggity. Dark Griggity said, you know what I'm saying? He can't believe that there's Xbox, I mean, there's Stadia fanboys out here that are capping for Stadia talking about exclusives. But as I just alluded to you guys, um, Xbox talks a lot about power, but they got to show it in the games. And even in the latter 2019, even with the botched launch, even with um, them being in early access, if you pound for pound match up the exclusive content on Stadia opposed to the exclusive content on Xbox, they do better than them at a fraction of the price as far as the quality. You know what I'm saying? You got you got Destiny 2, which is the biggest game, one of the biggest games on console right now. You know what I'm saying? And that has exclusive content, right? Then you match up uh, uh, Darksiders Genesis 2. I think, it, I forgot what the name of this game is. Phoenix Trial or something that was exclusive to uh, Xbox. Beats that, right? Um, then you match up even Guilt <laughs> at a 68 Metacritic. You match that up to Crackdown 3. So even in this early access mode, Stadia does well. They got better performance, you know, more 60 frames per second games. And they have better fidelity than most of the Xboxes out there, which are the Xbox One S's at a fraction of the price. That being said, Stadia still has a long way to go. I am not in denial. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I am not the fanboy that my old boy Dirk Riggity wants y'all to believe I am. But let me get into them things, all right? Instead of trying to uh, make excuses for myself, let me get into those things that Stadia has to do because I think Stadia has more to prove than anybody in 2020, all right? And here's some of the things that they need to do. First and foremost, they need way better marketing. They need a way better marketing campaign. And I think it should be two-tiered. They completely forgot about kids. They completely forgot about kids. They did not take advantage of the situation where kids can be more mobile, kids that love their Switch. Kids can be mobile with this platform, play AAA games, boop, 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 and then play it on a phone or play it on a tablet, whatever the case may be, and move around the house or play it on a browser. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. And then they need they need more darker tone, more serious tone advertisements. Forget all this hippie stuff. I get where that what demographic y'all were trying to hit with that because y'all thought that was your most favorable demographic. Y'all Google knows what I'm talking about. Forget that. Forget that hippie stuff. Y'all need better marketing because those the marketing right now is cringy. All right. Then you need better promotion of price and performance over consoles. Like the message should be, look, at a fraction of the price, you get better frames than the most powerful console in the world. You get better fidelity than most of the games. I mean, most of the consoles out there, which is the Xbox One S and the PlayStation 4 Slim. Okay. That should be your focus. Then going into E3, 
What y'all should talk about is even further advantages that the platform will have over consoles when these new consoles release. Like how are you gonna upgrade your server blades and deal with the fact that these people are now boasting 4K 60 consistently? You're no longer gonna have that 60 frames per second advantage over them. So how are you, how are you still gonna be better? Make sure you got those argument points already set up and ready to go at E3. You need more third-party partnerships like how you have with Ubisoft. You know what I'm saying? You need to find somebody else, a big-time publisher that's going to allow you to stream their games on your platform like how Ubisoft plans to do with Uplay Plus. Because that's that's a big deal and it can be even bigger if you can find another big publisher to do so. And lastly, look, this is just for the back. Look, I, look even though I prefer the platform over consoles right now, because of its mobility and its performance. And even though I think this the, the performance and stuff is, is very promising as far as the tech is concerned, I am not disillusioned at all as far as say that there, it's a for sure win. I, I know it's not, okay? The community is very skeptical of cloud gaming, okay? this The, the timing couldn't be more critical for Stadia as far as people giving it that the, the squinty eye, right? So there could become a possibility going into 2020 where they even more reject cloud gaming, regardless of how this performs, regardless of how the pricing works, all that stuff. So what they may have to do is to calm those nerves just to get rid of that narrative. They may have to bring in a um, dedicated device solution. And what do I mean by that? They currently have a zero dollar subscription thing that gets you access to the games at 1080p they have a ten dollar price tier that gets you access to the games at 4k 60 and what they need to do possibly if all else fails and cloud only is not hitting home they may need to come up with a third tier which i would suggest be 15 dollars or 14.99 that allows you to go to gog um that is like the steam like platform made by the people from cd project red right where if you buy a game off of GOG, you know what I'm saying? You can play it on Stadia for $15. You know what I'm saying? They're going to have to come up with a dedicated solution again if the community continues to be hostile to, towards Cloud's gaming. Kind of like what Microsoft had to do with the Xbox One X. They put the Xbox One X out there to get rid of the power narrative, uh, a handicap that they had, and Stadia might have to come up with a dedicated device solution to get rid of that handicap that they run into if it continues to widen or stay as bad as it is going into 2020, all right? So those are the things that I'm looking for going into the next year, you know what I mean? Um, I'm very excited to see what each of these platforms could offer. And I'm looking also to hear what you want from these platforms, all right? So let me know in the comment section below. And like I always say, if you like what you hear from your boy, you can check me out on the Triple B platform, PNTS platform, the HNDC platform, and also here on the Stadia Dosage platform as well. With that being said, I appreciate all of y'all and y'all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace. Happy New Year!